Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I've got a pretty big video. Uh, it's a video that's going to talk a little bit about what's happened in this channel, but you know, I'm sure you've noticed I haven't released a video in a couple weeks, so I'm going to talk to you about what's going to be happening on this channel, uh, and also um, share a lot of the inside in, insights that I have about the game, what I've seen over the last few years. Uh, and my perspective on what's going on in the game and what um, what I think this means for you. I, I guess I should just start by saying, you know, a lot of you probably don't even know how I got into this. Um, I started playing Marvel Strike Force in March of 2020. And that was not a coincidence because the entire world went into quarantine at that time. So I played this game because I'm somebody who does a lot of stuff. I'm pretty high in intensity kind of person do I work and do a lot of activities suddenly I couldn't go anywhere and I had needed to pass some time I think a lot of you did the same thing right so I got into this game um, literally um, you know 900 something days ago um, because of the pandemic and what really got me into the game was obviously I'm a big Marvel fan but also, it was a game where I felt like you could pretty quickly progress. It was actually a fairly generous game at the time as things went. I mean, nothing's perfect, and certainly there have been issues in the game from the very beginning. But I'll show you one image that um, gives you a sense of what I mean. You know, This was what my account looked like when I entered DD4. I was one of the first people to enter. I was the fourth person to complete it. I was competing with people who had 20 plus million GP, uh, TCP at the time. And I had seven. I basically was like a third of the size of the big accounts I was racing against. And how, how was I able to you know, get so far so fast? Well, partly I had just beaten DD2 and DD3 and I had hoarded all that gear. If you brought the same characters to DD2, DD3, and DD4, well... You could reuse a lot of you know, double dipping with a lot of those, a lot of that gear. And so you got you got tons of orange gear, right, out of all of that. And that's all you needed for DD4. And on top of all that, you know, I was able to focus on characters that I used elsewhere because there weren't that many characters that you needed. I mean, I had started playing this game a couple months before Black Order was introduced. This was my arena team right here. <laughs> And then my raid team was two of these characters. It had two of these characters on it. It was really, you know, I was using Maw and Thanos and then three other characters. I basically built eight characters and I had everything I needed for, for raids and arena. And, uh, you know, DD4, uh, I, you know, only I needed, you know, I, I, I only needed four characters uh, per section. And I had, you know, already built a good amount of characters for DD2 and DD3 that I could reuse. So I looked at this game and I was excited about playing this game because it was fun and it, it, it gave me such a great social component as well. You know, so many of you um, who are watching this, some of you have been um, people I've known for years now, uh, friend, people who I consider friends. Um, and I had made so many friends and built so many relationships when I couldn't even go outside, uh, but could spend many hours on discord and on stream chatting with you i used to stream every single night and my um then girlfriend now wife was on the stream every night with us um and so my why did i start content creation well i have to really give a shout out by the way to reminex and to mobile gamer who both encouraged me to go into content creation i released an infographic which you may not even remember this or whatever but at the time you know i thought that there was some bad advice out there. And so because I had raced DD4 early, I gave advice about what characters to bring into it. And what I loved about this game and what I thought was so cool about it is there were so many different ways you could go, right? All these characters here, many of them were not necessary for anything, but you had so many different pathways you could go, so many choices to make. And the fun of this game to me was the theory crafting element of figuring out how to best build your roster. I was into hoarding gear and hoarding orbs and all that stuff, but it was all about like spending efficiently, spending wisely. And really that's what I built this channel on was trying to help you make efficient investments. And so if you remember a lot of my early content, some of it was these early punch up videos back 
when I was in a smaller alliance, it doesn't even exist anymore, Agents of Chaos. Um, but, you know, doing a lot of war attacks early, early on in the early days of the channel. You know, then I moved to managing the uh, wars for and being the war captain for Pants of Hulk and doing videos like this, talking about what I thought the most fun part of the game was, which is this meta thing at the very top of the game in the biggest alliances where everyone had everything built out and trying to figure out, you know, how it best to use the new characters such as this one at the time. So it's over a year, it's a year and a half ago this character came out. Over a year and a half ago. It took that long for this character to become farmable. E over 18 months, which is insane. Um, which is insane. And I would do these things called these, the top 10 lists, right? Which were so popular at the, you know, my, always my most popular videos, the top 10 to invest in list. And what was so, you know, cool about doing this and was so fun for me as I would talk to all these other players and get their perspective and try to talk about not what the best characters were at that moment, but rather what the best characters were to invest in for the future. And that really is the important thing, right? I mean, that was what it was all about at that time. So we have limited resources. It's a resource management game. So let's try to figure out for the future how best to invest the resources that we have. But I'm sure a lot of you, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've seen the tone of the channel change over time. In the beginning, I was like so happy, so into the game. And you probably have noticed for a while I've uh, become less enthusiastic about it. I've spent more and more of my time um, trying to uh, advocate on behalf of players, on behalf of the community against the developers or to the developers or towards the developers to change the game. And this is something that has been going on for even longer than you saw in the channel. Um, you know, it, 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 this really started um, w well over a year ago, um, actually in early 2021, when there were, you know, to war testing and war changes they were going to make. And I really made the point to the developers that, you know, we were hoping the pandemic was going to be, the quarantine was going to be, ending and you could not have the situation where you had these races at the very top in war where players were all logging in at once you know all waking up at 4 a.m setting their alarms to all rush to uh you know attack at the very end of a war that that was not a realistic thing for a mobile game where you know middle-aged professionals uh, who were uh, you know spending their spare money on a game were going to log in in the middle of the night to play, it just wasn't realistic, you know, uh, to to have a, a game system like that. And when I was talking to a developer who since left the game um, about about this, you know, he told me, "Well, that's they we really like that aspect of it." We think it's great that people are logging in in the middle of the night and are, they have to be online at a certain time. And I became increasingly concerned as I was talking to developers and trying to push them to make the game better because it was such a big part of my life. It was, you know, hours I was spending a day with all of you. I mean, I think everybody here knows that if you're really into this game and you're hardcore about this game, it's like a second job, right? It is consuming it's hours of day it's hours of raiding and war and um you know all the time spent outside of the game not just in the game but spent theory crafting spent planning with your alliance spent you know plotting out you know what whether it's your crucible attack or what you're going to bring to a dark dimension which of course is no longer an issue but nonetheless um you know there's so much that you can do in this game and there's the whole community aspect of it uh, it can be a lot, and I cared a lot about this game. <laughs> but my perspective changed over time, right? So if you've been watching this this uh, channel, you've seen suddenly stuff like this, right? Or this, where I talked about the treadmill of just the insane um, amount of screen time required in this game. The insane amount of roster building required in this game. Where now, instead of we, I built those eight characters and I could do everything I needed for Arena and War, now suddenly I had to build every new character. Every new character. Because they would all be needed for a Scourge or needed, or needed to 
you know, be part of a team of a horseman or needed for raids or some other reason. Nothing was skippable anymore. There were no choices left. Everything had to be built. Everything had to be maxed. Um, everyone was on essentially the same path. And so, of course, you know, my, my uh, uh, thumbnails got darker and darker, right? And more in your face. What you didn't see is what was happening behind the scenes during that time. You saw stuff where, you know, I did an interview with Cerebro where at least I tried to ask him tough questions from my community, from the Discord that we have. Um, but what you didn't see was a lot of lobbying that I did over a long period of time. Because I will tell all of you, I was, I was originally considering or planning to leave the game a year ago, over a year ago when I was racing in DD5 because I had spent, you know, almost a year hoarding gear and hoarding war credits. I had 1.1 million war credits um, going into DD5. And then I discovered that actually it was mostly going to be determined by extraordinarily expensive offers and how many, how many thousands of dollars you were willing to spend on these offers uh, and I realized that was insane. Um, and I was, uh, you know, I just moved into a new home. Um, so I had a lot of other things to spend my time on. And I talked to my then fiance, who was absolutely adamant that we, I could not abandon this community and my friends, as she put it, in, the, in Twitch, who she loves, and everything about this game on the eve of DD5. So I played... Um, and streamed DD5 even on my honeymoon at her insistence. And I decided to spend time since then um, trying to focus uh, the developer's intentions uh, in a better direction. And so it wasn't really Cerebro who candidly is off doing his own thing. Very nice guy, but uh, <clears throat> was sort of not completely responsive to things. But there were a couple developers that I spent a lot of time talking to who are no longer working on the game. And I was really pressing them for changes. And at one point, um, about six months ago, I did have a conversation with Cerebro and uh, just a phone conversation. And I told him, I'm planning to leave the game. I'm a big you know, content creator in your game. I'm planning to leave, I potentially to go to another game. <laughs> and here are all the issues with your game. And I talked to him about things like screen time, the fact you have to be online at specific times, I just think is not conducive to people who have real lives, uh, families or jobs. I think the cost value proposition for this game is off. It's gotten way, way, way more expensive where you have to buy every new character and they're not farmable for a year and a half to two years. There's a lack of transparency about what um, characters you're going to need in the future or what you're going to need to build in the future. I understand that some of that is in Scopely's advantage to keep us in the dark, but a lot of it is pretty frustrating when all my content has to basically be, uh, my content has to basically be hoard, 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 and just wait because we have no idea what uh, the future is going to hold. And I felt like there was no more agency for players where essentially what was happening was that you know, basically, you know, players would um, just have to build for Apocalypse, and that's what everyone was doing. We're all building the same roster and going in the same direction, and it just took what I thought was fun out of the game. And, you know, Cerebro was very nice and listened to my concerns and was just like, you know, do what you're going to do. Um, and um, since that time, my interest in the game has gone down because I understood at least to some extent, that there wouldn't be a lot of changes from Scopely. I still tried. I stopped spending on the game. I thought maybe by making a show of that, that would have some um, uh, effect. It did not. Um, I wrote, as many of you saw, a very lengthy email to Archangel, laying all this out for him. And to his uh, credit, he spent a lot of time reading that and you know, going over that. And I do know that that was presented to the developers and I appreciate that. And I think at this point, 
it's safe for me to say that I've done what I can do um, for everybody in this community in terms of being an advocate. I don't think anything's going to change. I think we can expect monthly events that are very time consuming. I think we can expect the cost of this game to continue to be high. I think we can expect farmability to uh, um, still be an issue. I think the lack of transparency and the lack of player agency are there. Now, I know that for some of you, you really like the shift in the game. Um, I, I don't. It doesn't. It's not something that appeals to me. I don't like the fact that for a scourge, I don't know what I'm getting. I can't just build five characters to gear tier 15 and know I'm getting a, a particular character unlocked. I have to, you know, run things for a lot and guess you know, where I'm going to be on the leaderboard. So I have to say, for me, I, this has been a negative change. Now, it's not going to surprise many of you that part of my perspective here came from the fact that I've been playing Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes at the same time. I've mentioned it sometimes in videos, and I've done that because, frankly, um, it's helped me see that the game doesn't have to be this way. You know, in Galaxy of Heroes, I don't have to spend hours a day. There are many days where I barely have to do anything at all. As they've introduced new game modes, um, they've made other ones irrelevant, so I don't have to worry about Arena anymore, for example, because there's new game modes to focus on. They took the rewards out of the old game modes when they added new ones. Um, it's much less expensive. The new characters are, get farmable within three months. And within one year of a release, they are du they're double drops. So they're just, it's much easier to, you know, not spend on the new characters and still be able to, which I don't even do in that game, and still keep up with things. And it's not as punishing if you don't keep up at the very end. I, I think for right now, Marvel Strike Force is a fun game if you're not trying to keep up. Because if you do, um, you basically have to fall into a trap of spending just a tremendous amount of money. Uh, all of these games have an element of spending money and I've accepted that from the beginning and that's, that's how these developers make money and I totally understand that and that never really bothered me. But it's gotten too out of whack in this game. And so what does that mean? Well, you know, it, you know, it means that I've made a decision that... Um, I am not going to be playing Marvel Strike Force anymore. I think I've already made, had made the decision long oh, months ago that this game did not deserve my money. It got Amazon Coins money, the sponsorship money for just for new characters, but I just um, I didn't think it was worth supporting this game beyond that. But I, I don't think it deserves my time anymore, and I'm totally okay with that at this stage. I'm. As many of you know, I have a new job, so I'm very busy, and I just, this is basically like another job on top of it. Um, and so playing this game is, doesn't make sense for me with my life right now. I'm pretty busy with a, not only my new job, um, but a lot of other ventures and things like that. But I do want to say this, um, and, and I say this, um, you know, with, with nothing but positive feelings. And here you go. This is a video that I took from a little earlier today. You could see where I am in the game. You know, I have been gaming for 20 plus years now. And I um, have done all sorts of fun things. I was raiding Vanilla WoW. I was one of the um, earlier, um, um, uh, you know, early community uh, leaders for Star Wars Galaxy. I was the Pistolier correspondent. I uh, was, I was one of the leaders of Cyber Nations and I almost broke, I kind of broke the game, start, you know, War Metal Tyrant. I played all sorts of games. <laughs> and I guess all I would just say to all of you is that what really matters 
is the memories that you have from these games. I mean, I feel like, you know, somebody told me in the comments to one of my videos when I stopped spending money that, you know, philosophers like a guy who's been paying for his mortgage for 19 years and is stopping to making his mortgage payment and it, it, by, by stopping spending in the game. But, you know, at the end of the, ga- the day in a game like this, you don't get a house that's worth a lot of money. Your money just goes away. Your money is wasted. You're left with a roster. I have a roster with something like 13,000 teal catalysts, you know, teal uh, SBCs or whatever the, the, the teal ABCs and tons of teal gear and all this stuff. But in the end, it's not really worth anything, right? What is worth something, what does mean something is all of you and the community that I have built here. So this is not the end. I may, you know, pl- I will probably be playing other games in the future and I'll, and I'll be doing that here. Right now I'm still playing Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. Maybe I'll make some content for that if any of you actually want to watch that. If not, I could totally understand um, not. But I will just say this, you know, I'm sure all of you guys are going to find other streamers to watch and other uh, channels to go to. But um, I will remember many of you. And I, what took me so long to leave, and the reason this was a long goodbye, even though I've been increasingly um, unhappy and upset with this game, is all of you. Because I have so many friends in this game. I have grown to like and care about so many of you in this game. Um, The community has been so positive. And I'm so thankful for the Discord community we created. I'm going to keep that running. Um, you know, and you, for as long as you, and you know, we'll keep it moderated for as long as you guys want to keep that up. But I'm just, um, so thankful for all of you. And while I'm going to be off doing different things, maybe eventually making some content here for different games, cause I'm sure I'm not going to stop gaming, but certainly doing other stuff in my life. I will look back at the memories that I have, uh, from this time playing these few years with all of you and I'm going to think nothing but good things for that. So thank you all for the memories. I'm not thanking Scopely here for the memories. I'm thanking all of you. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for everything. Um, I know um, me and my wife both miss many of you and I will do my best to lurk on the discord and be around Um, and Stay tuned because more content for different games may come in the not too distant future. Oh yeah, you don't need to like the video. You don't need to subscribe. If you want to comment, uh, you do so. I'll take a look at the comments and uh, I'll check out the Discord as well. All right, guys, it's been fun. Goodbye and thanks for all the memories.